Hello, in this video I would like to show how to do a Fourier analysis or fast Fourier transform or FFT analysis from some data given in an Excel sheet. So let's open up this Excel sheet. You can see that I have not Excel installed here on this computer. I'm using OpenOffice. Uh, but yeah, we have a huge table and we have a first column here where some heights are given. Um, these are heights in kilometers above ground and then we have a row here where our time domain is given month, 180 months. Um, so for data for 15 years from 2006 to 2020. And then the data that we are going to analyze really is temperatures measured for these different months. I think this is the average over the months or so, I don't know, in degrees Celsius for these different heights. So we have different heights, we have different month and we have the temperature in degrees Celsius measured at this heights for this month. And we are now interested as far as I understood, uh, this is not my data, this is some data that some person sent me over the internet and asked for help, ask, ask for advice. Uh, we are interested in the annual and biannual change or oscillation of this temperature in the different heights. So first step that we need to do is we need to get this data into MATLAB. So I'm using the xlsread function here um, from this file name. The tab key on the computer completes this and I will save it into a variable that I call raw data. And then you can see, okay, MATLAB complains here that I have no Excel installed, but it works anyhow. And we get this data here, um, six, uh, 37 rows and uh, 300 something, 60 something columns. So at first let's get these different heights from the data. They were saved in the first column. Um, and then in the third to the last row from the first column. And let's see, okay, then we get all these different heights from two to 36 kilometers. Now we can uh, get the month out of the table. I think month is a um, variable or function name that is already used into MATLAB. So I call this T, the time in month. And this was the uh, second line, the second row in this raw data file or in the Excel file, and then the second column and then 180 um, columns. And then we can see, okay, we get all the months from the first one to 180. I mean, this is essentially just the numbers from one to 180. Uh, we, but okay, th this, this is our, let's say our time steps. I will convert this because we are finding the interest in some annual change and biannual change, I will convert this into years. Uh, so we take these months and divide them by 12. And then we will get um, the time steps in years. And finally, we can get our temperature from this raw data and they would be saved in, um, yeah, like here in the in the second, let's make this a little smaller, from the third to the last row and then from the second to the 181st column. This should be all our temperature values as you can see for uh, the 35 different heights and 180 months. And then the first thing that I would always do um, if doing some Fourier analysis like this, I would take a look at the time domain data. So let's plot as a, over the years, let's plot this temperature data. Um, and then we get plot and because we are real scientists, we will also label our axis and say, this is the time in years, or I will use the SI unit for years a for the Latin annum, if I remember correctly. And then here we have the temperature, um, or let's call this time. And then let's call this, uh, this will be the temperature in 
uh, not in years, in degree Celsius. Okay, and let's also add some grid and let's have a look at the plot. Here's the plot. And then you can see, okay, uh, we have these um, 35 different lines for the 35 different heights. This is the first one, uh, the blue line. This is um, two kilometers above ground around 20 degrees Celsius. This somehow makes sense. And then, you know, if you go higher, uh, temperature gets lower. And then you can see that also some heights are not very meaningful. Uh, because probably the measurement was faulty and then the person just took the average over the adjacent months. I don't know. Um, but we can see, okay, that there seems to be some annual and maybe also some biannual change. And if you go higher, uh, then it only looks kind of noisy. And if you go higher in this sense, uh, there's no legend here, no meaningful legend. I would assume that this is maybe really, really high. Um, that once again, this, this oscillation can be seen, but in between, I don't know, this does not seem to be like annual oscillations. This are, seems to be just noise. Uh, I would always take a look at this time domain data first. Uh, look if it's meaningful. We need equidistant time steps for our analysis and our starting time value. So the starting temperature and the end temperature should be approximately the same. There should be no, no, no slope because then there would be a huge jump between the first point and the last point. Um, and we would mainly only analyze this jump. But okay, this looks more or less meaningful time domain data. So what I will do now is I will turn this into some script so that I can rerun it, create a script out of it. Um, and now we will be using this Fourier function. And this Fourier function takes our time steps and the um, time function values and the mode. The mode will be here sinus because we have a continuous si uh, signal. We don't have just a single pulse. And then it returns the frequencies and it returns the complex amplitudes or the amplitude or the, the spectrum of this. Okay, so now let's take this function. Now we will do the Fourier analysis. Uh, we will take our temperature here in years and the temperature and the mode here will be this sinus. And we get back the um, frequencies. Uh, and as we're giving time in years, we will get back the frequencies in once per year. Yeah? If you would, would give this in seconds, you would get Hertz one over second. We are giving this in years, so we get once one, one over year. And um, this will here be our temperature spectrum. So I will call this temperature spectrum. And now this is a matrix because we have these different heights. Uh, this function will only work on a vector. So we will just take the first row out of it. Uh, one height, a single height. Um, and then for, for each for this row, all the columns. Um, okay, so this should calculate our spectrum and then we can plot, or maybe maybe I will run it first um, and save it as FFT analysis. And now we see, okay, now we got, um, we've got a temperature spectrum and so I can plot this. I will plot it into figure two and say this will be the plot of our temperature spectrum um, as a function of the frequency. And now if I plot this, MATLAB should complain that um, this is a complex variable and that the imaginary parts are ignored during plotting. We are also not really uh, interested in these imaginary parts, so we will only plot the absolute value out of it and now look for the plot. So here's the plot. Uh, once again, let's label our axis um, on the X axis. Now we have the frequency in one over year and on the Y axis, we have still the um, temperature in degrees Celsius. And maybe a grid would also be helpful here. Um, yeah, so this is now our plot and we can see, okay, there is 
Um, at first, there is a quite high constant part. So this 40 here, this is twice the constant part that we have seen in time domain. Let's see if I can put these diagrams here side by side. So you can see the average here of the first row, this was 20. So um, 20 is half of this, what we see here. And then we have some change that happens once per year. Um, and this change has some amplitude of 0 0.9 degrees Celsius. May, maybe this somehow corresponds to what we what we see here. And we have also some change that happens 0 0.5 times per year. So every two years, uh, this is some biannual change. And this has some amplitude of 1.8 degrees Celsius or 1.8 Kelvin. And then there is something that happens yeah, like uh, 1.5 times per year. Um, so every 0 0.666 years, um, every two thirds of a year, every eight months, does not make too much sense for me. Um, yeah, but, but th 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 I would say these are the two main frequency components here, some annual oscillation and some biannual um, oscillation. And I think this was also what the person who would ask or who had asked this question was really interested in. Okay, so then uh, let's see if I can also um, create a script out of this. Um, or let's say copy this to my script here. This was not really meaningful. Maybe I can just delete this line. And now last step I would like to do is I would um, extend this analysis to be done for every height. So I will introduce a new variable that I will call height index. And this will run from one to the length of all these heights. Mm. And for every height, we will do this Fourier analysis. This closes the loop. And now instead of one here, we use this index. And now we need to save um, this the result that we get for, for every height separately. So at the end, this will be also a matrix. It was a vector before, um, but now after introducing this loop, it will be a matrix like this with the rows running over the different heights and the columns here running over different time steps and here the columns running over the different frequencies that we get here. And now MATLAB is complaining that this variable changes the size in every iteration of the loop and that we should maybe pre-allocate some space. So I will initialize this matrix here with this filling it with zeros. Um, with this as the number of rows and then we can check the number of columns that we get here. This is half of the number of the months and then plus one. So let's and this can be also found here in this Fourier file. Um, uh, if the um, if the number of time steps is um, even, where is it? Um, then we can see here the number of frequencies is n divided by two plus one. So. Where, where n is the number of our time steps. So here, this is the number of time steps. This is the, the number of months or the number of these year steps that we have here. So put this in there, um, close this loop. Now also this warning here is gone. And now if I run this once again, we should get um, figure one. Now oh, I need to add some figure one here and maybe escape the output here with some semicolons. Okay, now we see, okay, this is still our time domain data. This is our frequency domain data. Frequency domain data doesn't look that nice uh, because it's on a linear scale. Um, now, if I change this into a logarithmic scale using the semilog y command, and run the script once again. Okay, then all the differences between these different heights 
Remember, there's still no meaningful legend here, so we don't know what all these different colors mean. But then you can see here, okay, um, the, the, the important oscillations, the important spectral components are the one for the annual and for the biannual oscillation. Everything else seems to be more or less noise. And um, one thing that also occurs here is we have just plotted, of course, the absolute value of the temperature spectrum. So the, yeah, the uh, constant parts that are below zero degrees Celsius, like minus 80 or minus 60 or minus 40 or minus 20 or whatnot here, they will be also converted into positive temperatures here because of this um, absolute value. So these absolute values here, these or the, 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 the constant part component, this does not make too much sense anymore. But um, yeah, everything else um, looks more or less meaningful, um, at least from my point of view. I'm not a metrologist. I don't know. I have no clue what this data means, but um, I was asked if I could help to show how to do um, Fourier analysis, a Fourier transform, a fast Fourier transform FFT of this data in MATLAB. This is what I have shown. Uh, my recommendations would be Always take a look at the time domain data uh, plotted. Look if it is meaningful. Um, also plot the spectrum. Look if the spectrum is meaningful and also if this two somehow correspond to each other. Because I know a saying, um, the FFT, the fast Fourier transform, is the most misused tool in EMC, in my field of research, electromagnetic compatibility. Uh, but I would say that yeah, FFT is probably also um, a very often misused tool in any other field of research because very many people use it and only very few people uh, really understand what they are doing there. So don't belong to these people who are using it without sense. Um, try to think about it, take a look at your data, take a look at your results, think about it if it is meaningful and then do good research with this.